Wi-Fi is great and all, but sometimes it has some limitations. Let's be honest, unless you have a really high-end Wi-Fi card in your computer, you're only gonna go so fast. Basically, if you have an old Wi-Fi router, you might be able to utilize it to achieve almost ethernet speed. What's up YouTube, Jason here with Bite My Bits. And in today's video, I'm going to be showing you how to use an old Wi-Fi wireless router to try to achieve near ethernet speeds wirelessly. We're going to be using something called a wireless bridge where you basically use your router to directly connect to another router. Now this is going to have a few different benefits, mainly because routers like these are built to handle multiple people. They have a lot of antennas, a lot more power, and overall they're just going to have the option to have a stronger signal to another router. Then all you have to do is hook up the ethernet jack in the back to your computer and well, you almost get ethernet speeds out of it. My main router today that I'm using as the access point point is going to be a TP-Link Archer C5400. And the route I'm going to be using to connect to it is a Linksys WRT3200. Now, of course, both of these routers are pretty beefy by their own, but combining them together, I was able to achieve some pretty impressive speeds. Now, something to note here is that each individual router that you're going to be using to connect to your PC and then creating that wireless bridge is going to have its own way of doing it. And it is very possible that you're going to run into a router that won't have this option built in, in which case, you might end up having to look into some alternative softwares like DDWRT. But thankfully, Linksys actually has this feature built in and it is super easy to set up. So accomplish what I did today with the Linksys router, all I did was hook it up in its stock form to my main computer. It automatically assigned a DHCP IP address to my main computer. Then I used the default gateway IP address to connect to the router like you normally would do with any kind of router setup. Then once you're inside the router, you get logged in. All you do is click on connections then go to the internet settings tab. And then from here, you can actually select from the drop down menu, the wireless bridge option. Now you will have to manually type in the SSID of the wireless access point that you're trying to connect to. I should note here though, with the TP link router, sometimes they have the option to scan available Wi-Fi networks. So again, your mileage may vary depending on your brand. So you type in the SSID, you type in the password, and you click OK. Now when the Linksys router goes into this mode, it, it changes the way it behaves. It's not accessible by that default gateway IP address anymore. Instead, it's going to connect and pull DHCP from your network. And then you just leave your main computer connected through one of the LAN ports, and you should be good to set up your internal IP address for your PC. And you might actually have to do this with the Linksys router in order to get a stable, reliable, connection through a wireless bridge, I did have to go into my interface properties and manually select an IP range that fell within my normal router's IP subnet. I think I said it's something like 192.168.2.154. And this might sound a little weird, but I just found that when you're connecting through a wireless bridge router to router, you kind of have some issues pulling a DHCP from your original router. And technically it is hit or miss. I, I got it to work before until I I realized I had to manually set an IP address, so sometimes it did pull DHCP, sometimes it didn't. But in the end, if you want a reliable, stable connection, just manually set your IP address. And after that, you're done. You are connected through your wireless bridge. You have a direct high-speed internet connection between each router. So at this point, you might be wondering what kind of speeds can you actually achieve compared to something like a standard Wi-Fi card? Well, on my main computer, I have a fairly generic Wi-Fi card, although it does have an external antenna something that you can actually wire up and stick somewhere on your desk for a better signal. Now this thing can go up to 300 megabits per second, dual band, 2.4 or 5 gigahertz, A, B, C, G, D, N, B, all the way down to Z probably. So to run some numbers here, I used a software called LAN Bench. I found it the most reliable for the most accurate numbers. As far as I can tell, it's a very similar test to iPerf, although it does have a nice graphic user interface, so I preferred it. And using this software to get a baseline number, I did connect to my test box. I used a 20 megabyte file, ran it for 30 seconds, and ran that entire test three times. Basically, I took the best score out of three times. So with the direct ethernet connection to my switch, I was able to get 910 megabits per second. Keep in mind that this is still an active network in my home, so there is going to be a little bit of headroom lost here. Next up, I ran it through the basic Wi-Fi card that I have in my computer. Again, up to 300 megabits is what's set on the spec sheet, but I was only able to get 200 
208 megabits per second after my three tests. So I go from 910 all the way to 208 just by using my Wi-Fi card. Oh, I should also mention that between me and the router, we're looking at probably about five feet through a drywall. So not a lot of interference and it's pretty close to the router. But then I switched over to the wireless bridge and things got actually very consistent and kind of interesting. With the wireless bridge running the test three times, I actually had three different results very close to each other. The first and the highest test results was 873 megabits per second. The second one was 870 and the one after that was 871. So I was definitely right there in the same neighborhood for each test being a very reliable and stable connection. But either way though, with the ether Ethernet cable, I got 910 megabits per second. With a Ethernet to a wireless bridge, 873. Now, while this is technically not Ethernet speeds, that's pretty damn close. Now, again, I know this is kind of a special use case scenario because not everyone's going to have two beefy routers just sitting around in their home. However, there are a lot of people that decide to upgrade their routers for various reasons, and that sometimes leaves them with an extra router that they just don't have any use for anymore. But if you're running a device off of Wi-Fi, you may not be able to run an Ethernet cable. Sometimes you might just want some extra speed. And having a direct connection with the wireless bridge through two wireless routers might be the answer for you. So guys, I hope you found this video interesting and useful. If you have any questions, comment down below. I will try to answer them. If you wanna find links to the routers that I used in this video, check the description. I will include links to see how much they cost and what their specs are. So as always guys, thank you for watching, like, and subscribe below, and have a good day.